Hi. Okay, we can just get into it since you've read the title of the video. You uh, know what this is about. It's a 20 week anatomy scan. Um, pregnancy brain. <laughs> I am currently 36 weeks. So a full nine months. Oh God, huh? Giant. Well, I am 36 weeks. So nine months on the dot. Just started my ninth month. It's all baby right here. All baby. But yeah, let's talk about it. So yeah, we went to the 20 week anatomy scan. So that was, I wouldn't call it an ordeal, but it was very stressful. Yeah, it was very stressful. Um, but I'm at 36 weeks, so clearly, you know, things turn out okay. Well, for the most part. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about what happened. I don't have any footage whatsoever. I think I might have, I'll, I have pictures, I'll insert them. But I'm pretty sure I didn't take any. <laughs> I didn't uh, get on camera at all for the last 16 weeks, because I'm 36 weeks. Um, just because, yeah, we were taking time to process come to terms with it actually that only took about four or five days honestly but um and then you know just get our life together we just had the baby shower last weekend and I'm now sitting here putting the things away and going through everything and I realized I never filmed this video that I meant to film um because at the time I was looking up other videos for abnormal uh anatomy scans and I didn't find any that were about limb differences. So I decided to make one. Um, so bear with me as I, you know, attempt to do this. Um, I have some notes here just because, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot. It was such a blur at the time that a lot of it's kind of like gone. Um, so I had to think about what I wanted to say. But yeah, so we went into the 20 week scan. Um, not nervous because I could feel her moving. Um, if you can tell, she's a girl. <laughs> um, but I was still nervous because I had never gotten to 20 weeks before. We previously had a miscarriage um, with our first pregnancy. That I miscarried at 10 weeks. We found out at 12 weeks. And so at, at our 12 week ultrasound with this baby, baby girl, um, we were much more nervous. Um, we just wanted to know that she was alive, <laughs> really. That was all we cared about. Um, and, you know, she was, she is. She's doing good. She's kicking now. And so when we went into the 20-week ultrasound, um, I was nervous, but just, you know, general nervous of, I want to make sure the baby's okay. Um, and Michael was kind of like, you know, he was also nervous, but kind of oblivious. <laughs> Which is fine. That's the better way to be, honestly. Um, but yeah, so... We went into the ultrasound, things were going well. We were chatting with the ultrasound tech. Um, this ultrasound tech that we had is not very chatty. She's also not very, um, I don't wanna say not very pleasant because she was perfectly nice. She just, you know, her job is to not convey emotion because if she's like, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, then you know something's wrong. But anyway, um, so this is the tech we've had before. We're not excited to have her again. <laughs> And so, um, it, it's just unfortunate that she used our tech again this time. And, yeah, so things were going well. Um, the tech was, you know, confirming or not, or not confirming whenever we pointed things out. Like, oh, look, it's her little, you know, her little leg or looks like her spine. Um, oh, that's her heart. Um, and as the tech was going through all of her, you know, um, anatomy, um, she spent a decent amount of time looking at her heart and I was a little bit nervous about that because I didn't know if that meant anything or if she was just you know taking a bunch of pictures and the heart's a complicated organ which you know it is and so she she did and her face just seemed like uh, like she wasn't happy and I was super nervous about that 
because of course once again she's not generally pleasant <laughs> in the first place and so seeing her even more like kind of sour face made me feel like something is wrong and I was trying to tell myself you're just being paranoid because you know your last pregnancy ended and not you know not with how not with a baby and so I'm just nervous because I want this pregnancy to end with a baby and so I was trying to tell myself it's fine she's always like this don't be nervous um, and as she was you know continuing to scan all of her anatomy um, she got down to her head and her head was already at 20 weeks like deep in my pelvis and so she was like I can't really get any images of her brain her head is just too far down and at an odd position um, and so she had me like kind of um, lie on my side and, and you know drink some water and try to move around to try to encourage the baby to move so she can get images of her brain and I was like okay that's fine um, and none of that works the baby was just like I'm staying where I'm staying and she said okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the OB in here to see if she can get any but any clearer pictures than I could and I said okay that's fine great I'm glad you're like calling for backup um, she said otherwise we'll have to schedule another one which is you know happens all the time it's fine um, and we'll just you know schedule it for next week if the OB can't get the same get the imaging and I said okay great thank you for telling us and so she walks out we're you know ooing and aahing about how cute she was and because her face was already like you know mostly formed and so it was really cute to look at her little face and see her and she looked just like me <laughs> um, even then um, we had another ultrasound more recently of course and she looks even more like me which is fantastic um, we see all the little mini me <laughs> but um, yeah and so the doctor comes in the OB she said hi I'm Dr. P you know just gonna assure her name um, I've come I'm coming just to see if I can get some more imaging that the tech couldn't get and we said yes hello we know that you're here for that um, and I said um, she said she couldn't really see her brain because she's too far down in my pelvis and then and, and Dr. P said yes um, there's also some things that she couldn't see that I um, wanted to talk about and I said okay cool she said one of the things that she couldn't find on the imaging the tech um, was her left hand as a lower forearm and I said what? <laughs> what, 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 what does that, what does that mean? Um, and I was kind of like going, uh oh, <laughs> you know, in my heart, and I was like, oh God, what does that mean? Um, and Michael being the more cool headed in a crisis was more up on it and, was, and said, so does that mean she couldn't see it or it's not there? Which is, you know, the million dollar question. And the doctor said, yes, so it's not there. And I was like, oh, Okay, okay, all right. She doesn't have a left hand. She doesn't have a left forearm. Okay, could be worse. Could be worse. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, well, you know, she can live without a left hand. It's fine. Could be worse. And of course, I'm saying all this in my head, staring at the doctor, wide-eyed, like, hmm, okay. Um, and Michael just kind of sighs and was like, oh, okay. Um, can it still grow? Is it a po is it possible that she'll still she'll she'll develop it? And the doctor said no, uh, the development for limbs happens at about eight to nine weeks. So if she didn't develop it at eight weeks, she's not going to develop it at all. And I was just, and I was in shock, of course, um, and just thinking to myself, what does this mean? What does this mean for her? What does this mean for us? Does it mean anything at all? Is it just a happenstance? Is it a sign of some further problem? And of course, I'm saying all this in my head and just in a state of shock. And so she's like, all right, we can take a look and see if, um, and see what the tech saw. Um, cause I, she, she took some pictures and it looks pretty clear. So I think we can see it. And I said, okay, let's, let's look and see what is going on. And so she pulled up the ultrasound. Um, you know, she put the wand back on and we were looking at the screen and you can really clearly see that she's like here's her um tibia no i have to look it up <laughs> what is the arm bones i i knew for a really long time what everything was called 
in your arm for obvious reasons and now I just forget um, and that's probably because I'm 36 weeks pregnant yeah so it is the humerus right the humerus bone and then you can see that there's a small amount of the radius and the ulna which are the two bones here and here so there's um, the humerus her elbow joint and a small amount of these two bones um, but there's no further bone there's no wrist there's no hand and I was looking at as I was looking at the image on the on the screen I said yeah she just it's not there it's the, the, that's it she doesn't like, her arm ends here and and I said okay what do we do <laughs> because I I, I mean, I'm trying to think of like what could possibly be the next step in whatever process we're about to start and so she looks at me and she goes well um, I, I said oh, what can we do what does this mean and she looks at me and she says well there's really nothing we can do um, unless this uh, news affects your feelings about continuing continue with the pregnancy and that of course shocked me because I was like oh my god there's a chance that we're gonna have to you know get rid of her or, or however you want to phrase it and me just being in shock I was like oh wow okay and Michael um, bless him really was like no absolutely not we have been wanting her for so long we're not getting rid of her <laughs> and I was like that that what he said that that's what I that's how I feel <laughs> um, and so she said, well, okay, if that's the case, then um, we want to um, get a few consultations with Children's Hospital. And so we live, you know, um, right outside of Boston. So Boston Children's Hospital, one of the best children's hospitals in the country. Fantastic. Um, we're going to get a consultation at Children's and um, we can also do some additional testing. And, and so I said, okay, great. What additional testing what can we do with children's asking all this question uh, all these questions um I say I I met Michael because I'm still in shock <laughs> I'm still um just trying to process the fact that you know our baby has a limb deficiency she is missing her left forearm and hand so what does that mean for her life and Michael's asking all these questions and um, being really on top of it God bless him and um, they said that you know once we go to children we'll get an MRI and we'll get another ultrasound um, to ultrasound to confirm everything and an MRI to just check the, her the rest of her general structure to see if it all developed normally um, or the rest of her developed normally and so and I said okay great we'll get a consultation at children's um, what are the what other testing can we do to see if this is just a physical um, abnormality or if it's genetic um, because if it's genetic then that could mean further things um, she said and she had kind of said all right well it's probably not genetic because it's only on one side usually if there's a genetic factor for a limb abnormality it's on both sides or on multiple limbs um, and the rest of her limbs look pretty normal so it's probably not um, anything genetic and we said okay well the chances of it being genetic are really small but the chances of us miscarrying at 10 weeks with our last pregnancy was also really small and the chances of her having a limb deficiency at all is really small so we're gonna do the genetic testing <laughs> um, and so she said okay great um, she gave us her card. She said she's going to go put in the consultation with children's and they should be calling us, uh, you know, the next day or the day after. This was a Thursday that we had this ultrasound, the anatomy scan. And she said they'll either call us on Friday or they'll call us on Monday. And I said, okay, well, um, is there some sort of rush? Wait, was this on Thursday? Let me look it up. I used to know all of this like down pack, but at this point in my pregnancy, I just don't know anything anymore. Um, so let's look it up. 
it was a Monday. <laughs> I don't know why I said Thursday. Uh, it was a Monday. So um, Monday, we had the 20 week scan. They told us all this. And they said um, children would call us either Tuesday or Wednesday. And if we wanted to schedule an amniocentesis, um, which is where they, you know, um, put a needle into your stomach, into your um, your uterus, and withdraw a little bit of the amniotic fluid um, to try to get some genetic material directly from the baby, um, we would schedule that. And basically she was saying, excuse me, she was framing all this as in, you know, we want to get this done as soon as possible, just in case something comes up and we do find out that there is some genetic cause you have basically four weeks before Massachusetts won't allow you to terminate the pregnancy. And that, you know, really, really scared me. And not in a way that like, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't have time to like make a decision. It was more just like, I would hate to find out that our baby has some rare genetic condition where she's incompatible with life and the only sign was that she didn't grow her left arm. That would be horrible, horrible and devastating and that was really like, in, in my mind at that point was, as long as she doesn't have any of those conditions, it's fine. And no, it, she doesn't need an arm, it's fine. <laughs> and so, yeah that that really was where you know she she left the appointment she said she's otherwise she looks pretty good to me i think she'll she's gonna be fine otherwise um and i think you can just you know take the time think about what you want and kind of feel a little bit reassured that it's probably not genetic she's probably fine otherwise and we'll find out soon either, either way and we said all right Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming in and talking to us. And um, and so she left. She left the room. And she they gave us a bunch of ultrasound pictures. Um, and you know we I took one out and I looked one at I looked at it one, and it was the one of her side profile. And I just started crying because she looked so cute. And I said she's going to be so cute and I said she's only gonna have one arm though <laughs> like what does that mean is she is she going to have you know the life that I want her to have the, the type of life I want for her um and of course I'm sitting there crying Michael's holding me and consoling me and um and I just kept saying she, she'll she be fine even even with one hand she'll be fine and he was like yes she will be fine even with one hand um and so we left and we were we're sitting in the car um, after the appointment um, and I kind of just sighed and Michael said, I'm, you know, I'm going to call my parents and I'm going to call my mother and then I'm going to call my father and I'm going to let them know. Um, and I said, okay, and then I'll call my mother and let her know. And so he calls his father. His father's like, oh, wow, okay. Ask a couple questions. He says, well, you know, she'll be all right. It'll be fine. <laughs> and, and hang up. Um, and then he calls his mother and his mother you know she's so sweet she immediately starts crying and she said oh my gosh my poor baby she'll be okay I'm I'm so sorry this happened to her and and uh, of course that broke my heart because yeah she'll be fine but you know it's 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 an added difficulty to her life she's already gonna be half black half Jewish <laughs> in Boston and you know with one arm and so I just kind of sat there and I sighed and I was like yeah she'll be okay but you know she's just out of difficulty of course and then I called my mother and I told her you know um, that she uh, wasn't able to develop fully in the womb and um, early on and so she only has uh, her left her right arm and and she doesn't have a left arm and forearm and my mother's immediate response was she'll be fine that's fine that's fine as long as she's like you know otherwise healthy and I said the same thing I said yeah she'll be fine <laughs> um 
and we all just kept reassuring each other that she'll be fine like people lose their limbs all the time and they're fine it's not easy you don't want that to happen to anyone but it's not the worst thing they don't it's not something that's life-threatening to not have all of your limbs um, there's lots of accommodations now we live you know in 2022 uh, and where there's lots of technology and prosthetics are amazing and all this other stuff and so Michael and I who were sitting in the car trying to figure out what to do because we don't want to go home and so we just drive to Panera <laughs> um, drive to Panera to get some sandwiches and we're sitting there we're just kind of trying to process the fact that um, our daughter is gonna have a limb deficiency and does that mean she has a disability does that mean we have to treat her differently does the what what do we have to do or how do we have to change to make it so that she's comfortable hello this is our this is your other baby feisty for a baby um so yeah so this is our first child uh not the cat <laughs> um yeah um and so we were just trying to we were already trying to wrap our minds around just being parents and so getting our mind around being parents to a child with a limb deficiency was just overwhelming because I did not know what that was going to mean if it meant anything um would, would she have to have a you know prosthetics was she going to need specialized equipment was she going to need specialized care um and so I was still in like we were, we were both still in like kind of a state of shock and so we were just kind of asking each other questions with no answers of course which you know <laughs> you know isn't great because then you just feel even more overwhelmed and scared um but we were just sitting there you know in the car eating our sandwiches and we were just looking things up and Michael was really focusing on like um, organizations that make prosthetics and I was really focusing on like quality of life sort of thing um, where like how is she gonna tie her shoes or like you know button her shirt things like that um, and so we were both trying to understand what we could do for her you know as best we could as, as two-handed people how could we help our one-handed daughter and <sighs> yeah so i guess i'll tell you a little bit more about like you know the things that happened after that um we did a bunch of research i found a lot of um a lot of good websites and then i also found a really um a really fun instagram page uh lucky finn the lucky finn project yeah the lucky finn project um where they you know just show people with limb deficiencies and um either congenital which means they're born with it or amputees um and they're all they all you know are normal people living normal lives just with some limb deficiency and that really helped me um, feel like even though she's going to have some issues with some things uh, what I don't know because she's not here yet um, that she'll be fine <laughs> even though I kept telling people that and people kept telling me that it helped to see it it helped to see that She'll be fine. She'll learn how to do anything and everything she wants. Um, and I also saw a couple of YouTube channels um, um, with people who, you know, either have congenital limb deficiencies or um, amputees. And so watching some of those videos of just how I do such and such with one hand, how I tie my shoe, button my shirt, how I pick up my kids with one with only one arm. Um, those things really helped me feel like she still deserves to be here and it's not a mistake to continue on with the pregnancy now that's not something I really thought hard about um, because we, we we already love her we already want her but I was I'm I'm sure at some point or no I really shouldn't be sure about this <laughs> um, but I feel though I feel as though at some point I'm afraid that she's gonna say well why did you have me 
knowing that I have this deficiency. And my only thought is because you are already our family and it doesn't matter if you only have one hand, we love you. We want you in our family. We want you, your life in our life. And I just hope that that's enough. <laughs> um, I'm assuming she's like some sort of angry teen in my mind when she says this, but who knows? Maybe she just like doesn't care ever <laughs> and then, you know, it's fine. Um, which is what I hope for. I hope that she's not like, you know, upset that she is alive. That would, that would be upsetting. Um, but there are people who are upset that they're alive and they don't have, you know, de limb deficiencies. So we'll just do our best to give her the life that we want her to have and hope that she really loves it because there's only one time in your life where you can give unconditional love, really, and that's with your kids. And that's the only time that they're ever going to really get unconditional love is from their parents. So as long as we love her unconditionally, give her the very best um, that we can give her, then uh, hopefully that's enough. Um, yeah, but I veered off the story of actually what happened. Right, so the next day... So the, the ultrasound was on a Monday. On that Tuesday, um, we called and scheduled for the amniocentesis. And so um, we scheduled the amniocentesis for the, the Thursday. And we were figuring maybe we'll go to Children's Friday or, or whatever. We'll, just, we'll figure it out. Um, but Children's Hospital didn't call us on Tuesday or Wednesday. And so by Thursday we were going in for the amniocentesis and um I said okay if they don't call us today I'm calling them tomorrow because I'm not waiting till Monday to call them um and so when we went in for the amniocentesis the woman who came in to do them um she was fantastic love her um she's another maternal fetal medicine doctor I did say that Dr. P is a maternal fetal medicine doctor um which is you know a high-risk pregnancy doctor who specializes in fetuses with abnormalities or pregnancies with abnormalities, uh, which makes sense. And so this other doctor, um, Dr. B, if I remember her name correctly, um, Dr. Oh, whatever, uh, Dr. B, she, so we get into do the amniocentesis and she says to us, um, it's, incredible how upbeat we are just having received this news you know three days ago and and I said to her we spent a lot of time doing research and trying to convince ourselves that she was going to be fine and since we had already decided the minute we knew um, that she was going to be born with a limb deficiency that we were going to we were we weren't going to get rid of her we were going to keep her we had to come to terms with it. There was nothing else we could do. We couldn't pretend she had two hands. Um, and so, yes, so we did the amnio. Um, and once that came back, um, oh, about a week later, came back, you know, totally normal. There's no, um, there's no genetic signs of any genetic conditions that would cause a limb deficiency. And which, you know, we kind of suspected was going to happen. We hoped and kind of knew that that was going to be the case. But just in case. Um, Children's Hospital. Right, so it was, this is now Friday. Um, they got the referral on Monday. They hadn't called us. And so, come Friday, I call them. And or actually, I'd called them once on Wednesday just to see what was up. And they said, oh, you should, you should be getting a call, an intake call today or tomorrow. Um, which was Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, hadn't gotten an intake call, so I called back to do the intake call. <laughs> um, and they said, oh, that's odd, sorry about that, you didn't, that you didn't get the intake call, um, let's do it now, um, because I don't know what the holdup is. And I said, okay, great, perfect, that's all I wanted to hear. And so, we did the intake call, we scheduled an appointment for the following, following Thursday at Children's, let's just double check the date on that. Um, the following Wednesday, 
So this is Friday that I had um, called Children's. We scheduled an appointment for Wednesday to do an MRI and a follow-up ultrasound. Um, we did a, a, a follow-up ultrasound with the amniocentesis already to get the rest of the imaging of her brain. Because um, she flipped, uh, her head was up this time instead of down on my pelvis. Um, so they said, okay, great, we'll do the additional imaging right now for our own clinic um, records, but Children's will do another ultrasound for their hospital records. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um, I'd rather you look at her than, you know, wait on information from somewhere else or whatever. Um, she looks great. Everything looks normal. All the structures are there where they're supposed to be. Um, and so come Wednesday, come Wednesday, we go to Children's Hospital and, you know, we're just, you know, kind of nervous. Uh, one, because I had never done an MRI before. Um, and we're nervous because we don't want them to see anything additional on the MRI. Really, that's what it is. We don't want them to find anything. We want them to go, nope, looks like a baby. <laughs> um, and then send us on our way. Um, which is, you know, great. Which, ended up, which is what ended up, ha ended up happening. And so I was, in the ultrasound, uh, I was in the MRI for about an hour. And they said, well, babies don't usually like this, so she'll probably be moving around a lot. And she did not like the MRI. The MRI is extremely loud. And I had headphones on. Uh, Michael was in the room with me. He had headphones on. Um, but uh, my headphones were playing music, so I was trying to, like, you know, relax and distract myself for the hour. And she was just fighting. <laughs> she was like, I don't know what this is, but I need to make it stop. And so she was rolling and kicking and 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 really like just upset um which you know is understandable it's suddenly a huge amount of noise even though the womb is already noisy with your heartbeat and your stomach gurgling but suddenly it's like being at a concert when you don't see anything else changing of course so she was freaking out um yeah, so she was freaking out during the MRI, and then after the MRI, we had a, you know, little break before we had to go do the follow-up ultrasound at Children's. And so we went to, we went and had lunch, you know, just calmed down a little bit, and then went and did the, ultra, uh, the ultrasound. And the ultrasound tech was super nice, um, just chatted with us about, you know, herself, and asked us about us, and we just, you know just chatting she was just being nice which is really what I liked even when she, um, you know um, when she saw something that wasn't quite right because um, this this ultrasound she had noticed that my cervix was tunneling funneling T tunneling or funneling I'll figure it out um, which means that instead of my uterus being closed and long um, there was a gap at the top and she said oh um, okay it looks like um, I gotta take some additional imaging here and I said okay great and I was, I'm, I'm watching because I've done a lot of research just in general about a lot of things because I really I really like um, knowing about what's going on <laughs> and so I had done a lot of research about you know the cervix and what it's supposed to look like and how long it's supposed to be and as she's measuring my cervix, it's supposed to be about 40 millimeters, and mine was 16, 16 millimeters, which is much shorter than it should be. Um, and I kept thinking, oh great, I'm gonna need a, you know, a claritage, one of those staples to, to keep it closed, because I'm only 21 weeks at this point. And at 21 weeks pregnant, the baby's not able to survive outside the womb. And after all of this trouble, she's gonna make it. <laughs> okay? Right? Yes, you, know, so you know what I'm saying? Mean? And so I was just like, Ugh. well, I'd rather have, you know, the staple than no baby. But I, of course, I wasn't saying any of this because she, you know, the ultrasound tech is not allowed to actually tell you anything. But if you know what you're looking at, then you know what you're looking at. Um, and 
I was seeing as she was measuring that it was 16 millimeters. That's too short. It's supposed to be around 30 to 40 millimeters. And the only solution that I know that I had done research on and knew of was the the staple, the Claridage. Or Clerge. Well, I'm probably saying that wrong. It's fine. Um, but um, and so I didn't say anything, of course, because I can't ask her because she can't tell me. And you know we're still just chatting she's just like okay i'm just gonna do some more imaging and i said okay great cool <laughs> um take the pictures for the doctor because that's what what she's doing that's what she's supposed to do and so in my mind i'm like thinking okay great my baby has one arm and my uterus is opening <sighs> great <laughs> perfect fantastic <laughs> um and so she leaves, she says I can, you know, get dressed. Um, they have all the pictures that they need. And as soon as she leaves, I tell Michael, so my my service is too short. And he was like, what? <laughs> How do you know this? <laughs> and so I was just telling him, you know, the numbers, where it's supposed to be, where I am, what that prob what they're probably gonna do um, to try to stop my cervix from opening and, and evicting the baby. Um, and he was like, oh, Jesus, just one thing after the other, isn't it? And I said, it is. It really is. Cat hair. Cat hair everywhere. I'm trying not to be too precious about this chair. Because it's going to have baby vomit and poop and all sorts of things on it. But, come on, can't keep it clean for like three weeks? Jesus. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, um, and he was like, well, all right, we'll get the staple. And I said, yep, I'll get the staple. Um, and then, so we leave Children's because that was, that was our appointment. Those, those were our appointments for the day. The MRI and the ultrasound. Um, all the doctors were super nice, super great. All the techs were great. Um, all, like, everyone at Children's Hospital is super nice. Love them. <laughs> and so we leave. Um, and as soon as we leave, we got a call from my, um, from Dr. P. Um, cause she's now my, um, high risk pregnancy doctor. Um. My, my MFM doctor, Colonel Fetal Medicine. And um, she basically called us like while we were in the car on the way home. So like 20 minutes after we left, she doesn't work at Children's. Um, so she got the imaging super fast, <laughs> which I think is awesome. Um, she said, I look, well, the MRI looks great. Um, we noticed that you, your cervix looks like it's shortening um, on the follow-up ultrasound. And I said, yes. Um, so what do we do about the shortening? Um, because we want to keep the baby. And she said, well, okay, well, you're actually, um, normally women hear about, you know, the thing, uh, the staple, the claritage. And I said, yes. She said, but you're actually too far along to have that. And I said, oh, hmm. Okay, so what do we do? <laughs> um, because after, I think, about 14 weeks, I'm probably, I'm, my dates are iffy on that, but after about 14, 16 weeks, they don't give you the staple anymore. They don't give you the claritage because there's a much higher risk of them accidentally piercing the amniotic sac and breaking your water and then you have to give birth, um, which is the exact opposite of what you want. <laughs> and so um, she said, well, we're going to start you on... Um, uh, this thing called progesterone, which is, you know, you're going to insert it um, into your vagina at night um, and um, just take a nightly supp uh, suppository, essentially. And you're going to do that um, until you're about 36 weeks. Uh, so I just stopped doing that. Fantastic. All of that to say that, um, let's go back to when I was 20 four weeks so that is the cutoff point for Massachusetts to allow you to still get a uh, an abortion if you so choose um, which we weren't going to do that didn't matter but that really was kind of the time where we had had all this testing done we had the addition the additional the additional genetic testing done um, and everything was kind of done and wrapped up at 23 weeks. So at 20 weeks we found out, by 23 weeks we had gotten all the testing, gotten all the results, gotten all the imaging. Everything else looks fine. She's perfectly healthy and normal, aside from the limb deficiency. 
And so we were kind of just um, um, waiting on a consultation from the doctor at Children's, from the, from the orthopedic specialist at Children's. And so we, once we talked to him about what possibly we could need after she's born or before she's born, is there anything we should do, anything we should get, anything we should be prepared for. And what this, uh, what he told us, he's an orthopedic surgeon, I think, or, you know, he, he specializes in, in limbs, in, in children. And he said that there's nothing you need. You don't need anything. You don't need to do anything. Um, we all have to schedule an appointment with her after she was born. Um, we'll have to schedule four appointments with her after she's born. Um, to just check on her, uh, her arm, her milestones, um, and the first appointment is really just we're gonna look at her, we're gonna touch her, and then we're gonna then we're gonna go if she's fine. Um, he doesn't anticipate she'll need any surgery because sometimes you know if children are born with extra digits or like something is grown incorrectly in some sort of way shape they may have to break it and straighten and fix it, but. Uh, there's nothing for them to to fix. It's just where it is, and it's, they, her arm joint looks like it's fine, like it like it moves just well. Um, and so they're gonna come. And they're gonna look at her, gonna wiggle her arm around, touch her other limbs, and then they're gonna go. And then the three appointments after that are for you know when she's um, sitting up, when she's crawling, when and, and then for something else. I forget. Um, but those have to be scheduled and hearing basically what we talked about with the orthopedic specialist was a lot of children nowadays who are born with limb deficiencies don't really use prosthetics and not because they don't work well or because they don't um, they can't be useful but be, because they're born without limbs they don't think they need an additional thing because they've never had it, they, they'll, they'll adapt without it. Whereas children, you know, who have um, amputations have to adapt to not having it. And so it's, it's harder to adapt to not having it than it is to adapt to adding something new. And so that also made me feel really good that for the most part, she doesn't need anything. She's not gonna need a, a prosthetic unless she wants one. Um, we're probably gonna get her one try to get used her used to it just in case she wants one when she's riding a bike or playing baseball or doing whatever and so when she's you know old enough to have her first you know my first prosthetic <laughs> at six months or whatever um we'll get her one she'll pro it, it's not gonna be any mobile it'll just be like a, a thing attached to the end of her arm that she that she'll probably take off and throw at people but <laughs> um but we'll get it just to see, you know, see how she likes it. Try to get her used to it. Um, but yeah, that 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 consultation made me also feel really confident that she won't need anything really. She'll just need us like any other baby. Um, she's she's going to be a regular baby aside from the fact that she only has one full arm. Um, she'll be crawling. She'll she'll she should be crawling, walking, balancing, doing all those milestones the same as any other child I want to get up but this this little guy he he just makes it impossible hey hey I want to get up and turn on the light can you can you get out of my way please he loves to be right next to the baby it makes me think I'm like gonna go into labor soon because he's usually not this clingy well actually no it's a lie he's always he's very clingy he's one of those cats that just like need to be touched and held at all times. <laughs> um, you don't look comfortable. Let me readjust him. Yeah, so like I say, she'll be doing any walking, crawling, balancing, the same as any other child. She, her milestone should be the same. I'm gonna turn on the light because I just realized the sun went down and you probably can't see a gosh darn thing. If I can get up, there we go. All right. Oof, that is yellow. 
<laughs> oh, that's so yellow. Oh my God, that's so yellow. Can I do anything about it? I don't think I can do anything about it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wrap the video up as quick as possible. As, as quick as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> talking to the orthopedic specialist made me feel much more confident about the fact that she's not gonna need anything um, and that she's gonna be a normal child aside from maybe modified crawling, modified balancing, but she should still meet all the same milestones. And the reason I wanted to record this is because I'm, like I said, I'm going through all the things in the baby shower and we got these. <sighs> Sorry, they're yellow at this point, but um, they're little mittens. And we got them, even though most of our family and friends know she only has one hand, but she still has the other hand, which, you know, babies are born with really long nails and so they like to scratch themselves. Um, well, they don't like to, but they do, <laughs> they scratch themselves. And so I was just looking at this thinking, this is double <laughs> what we need. <laughs> so if she, even if she loses one, it's fine, she only needs one. Maybe we'll put the other one on her little nub and just have her match. But um, yeah, after talking with the orthopedic specialist, um, we, feel, we felt really relaxed, really confident. Um, Michael has been doing research on prosthetics and things like that, just you know, to see what's out there and he's insisting that she's gonna have like a bat cave sort of uh of arrangement of all the prosthetics that she could possibly need for bike riding or for horseback riding or for tennis or for video gaming or whatever she likes to do or what she's whatever she's gonna want to do um and so that is how we got the news at our ultrasound processed it got the additional testing and additional imaging and i've really just come to terms with the fact that She's gonna have one arm. Um, okay. <laughs> and that's really that. Um, it's hard, it's hard news to get. And so if you're, you're watching this video wondering how I'm so okay with it, um, it is definitely because we had a miscarriage with the first baby. And losing that pregnancy was so difficult for me that the thought of losing this baby was a non-option and so I am so ready to accept whatever <laughs> and so I think that's that's how it um, that's how I was able to process it so quickly and so readily I guess um, but yeah, I said I was gonna end this video quickly. I didn't. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. I'll try to get to them. And otherwise, we're just waiting on baby girl. I'll see you next time.